All right, so we've taken a look at finding the prime factorizations, trying to simplify radical expressions. Now let's take a, take a look at the second method. So this is um, unit 1.2, and here we're going to take a look at method number 2. Well, okay. I know, I know that uh, math says, but math says that the square root of something times the square root of something else is equal to the square root of those things being multiplied. Another way of looking at that is the square root of two things being multiplied is the square root of the first thing times the square root of the second. All right, so these are saying the same thing. Well, let's see how that looks in action. Well, let's take a look at that first example, the square root of 12. Well, let's take a look. What is one of those, what is a factor of 12 that is a perfect square? Well, I know that 12 breaks into 4 times 3. And I know that the square root of 4 and times the square root of 3, right? The square root of two things being multiplied, I separated into 2. Well, the square root of 4, what's that? Well, that's just 2, and I'm left with 2 roots of 3. All right, so what we, what we did on the last video, all right, we'd have to break 12 down into all these numbers and then find them and circle them and go through that whole process. But here, I'm just taking advantage of what math tells me. Math says that when I have two things underneath a radicand that are being multiplied, I can, uh, I can say that it's really the same thing as the first thing times the, the square root of the first thing times the square root of the second. Let's take a look at a more difficult problem and see how that, how that translates. If we look at the square root of 54, well, I know the square root of 54 is going to be the same thing as the square root of 9 times 6. All right, so I get the square root of 9 times the square root of 6. Well, the square root of 9 is what? All right, it's 3, so I end up with 3 roots of 6. That might be something that some of us are a little bit easier at picking out perfect squares that are factors of other numbers. If you have that skill, then method number two is going to be much more helpful. If you're good with method number one, don't worry about method number two. Stop this video and go back to what you're doing and keep going. All right, so one more example here. Let's take a look at another one that's really gross. The cube root of 32x to the seventh. All right, so cube roots. Well, I know there's a perfect cube of 32, and that's 8. So here I'm going to break this into 8 times 4. It's the cube root of 8 times 4 times x to the third times x to the third times x. And that will allow me to break this up. I'm going to skip this intermediate step here and just hop straight to. The cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of x to the third is x. The cube root of x to the third is x. And then I'm left with the cube root of 4x. All right, so then I could clean this up and just simply say that it is 2x squared times the cube root of 4x. If you're going to use method 2, if you're going to use this method, note you're going to need to be familiar with perfect squares and a few perfect cubes. So the perfect squares like 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. The perfect cubes well, 1, because 1 times 1 times 1 is still just 1. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. All right, so if you're familiar with these numbers and you know them really, really well, then method 2 might save you a lot of time. 